Okay, we're going to continue our problem 2-38. We've just completed our schedule of cost of goods manufactured. In this video, we're going to prepare a schedule of cost of goods sold and an income statement. So let's get started with the schedule of cost of goods sold. We'll start with the name of our company. The name of our company is Outdoor Supplies. The name of the statement we're preparing is a schedule of cost of goods sold. And this again is dated for the year ended December 31st, 2017. So what does a schedule of cost of goods sold do? Well, like the name sounds, it tracks our cost of goods sold. We know the cost of the stuff, the goods that we manufactured. Now we've got to say, what about the goods that I sold? And how do I do that? Well, I compare what I manufactured to what I had in beginning and ending inventory. Beginning and ending, pardon me, finished goods inventory. So if I had 84 grand in inventory, on January 1st, well, that'll be my starting point. Uh, that's goods that are ready to be sold. So let's start there. Uh, finished goods inventory. It was 84,000. And I manufacture 974,000 during the year. Well, the amount of goods I have available for sale will be 974 plus 84. One million and fifty-eight thousand, and we call that our goods available for sale. So again, I had eighty-four thousand in finished goods. So that's, those are goods that are ready to sell. I made nine hundred and seventy-four thousand more during the year. So if I sold everything, if I sold out, I would have sold a million and fifty-eight thousand dollars worth of stuff. But of course, I didn't sell out. I had some left over in ending inventory at the end of the year. I had sixty-eight thousand in ending inventory at the end of the year. So I didn't sell those. So I'm not going to count those as my cost of goods sold. So I deduct. finished goods inventory on December 31st, 2017, and that was 68,000, meaning I must have sold $990,000 worth of inventory, dollar sign at the top and bottom, and we've got ourselves a good schedule of cost of goods sold. And remember this computation, it's come up three times now. We've added beginning inventory, so plus beginning inventory minus ending inventory. Down here, plus beginning inventory, add beginning whip, deduct ending whip. Down here, finished goods gets added, uh, beginning finished goods, and ending finished goods gets deducted. So each of these inventory types, we're always adding beginning inventory and deducting ending inventory. All right, so that's it for our schedule of cost of goods sold. Time to move on to our last schedule, the income statement. Let's get going on that. The name of our company, Outdoor Supplies. The name of the statement we're preparing is an income statement. And this is again for the year ended December 31st, 2017. Okay, so what is our income statement? It is the summary of revenues and expenses. We take revenues minus expenses to compute net income. So let's start with our revenues and our only revenue for this company is sales revenue. So our sales revenues were Right here, second from the bottom, 2050. Our cost of goods sold, 
Oh, uh, just thinking about income statements. Remember, it's revenues minus expenses. Cost of goods sold is the top expense. It gets top billing. Sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. So 2050 minus 990 equals 1060. And that's our gross profit. Remember what that means too. If I sell stuff, obviously I sell it for more than it costs me to manufacture. S goods that cost me about a million bucks to manufacture, I sold for about two million bucks. In other words, my markup is double, double the cost. Uh, and that's not an unusual markup. I'm not being greedy here. That's why companies go into business. They go into business to sell things at a profit. So uh, there's not a problem there. Uh, but there's more costs to doing business than just simply the cost of the stuff. You also have other period costs. So we identified costs as being either product or period. That's direct labor, direct materials, or manufacturing overhead are product costs. All the other costs are period costs. Well, now we've got to deal with them. We'll call these selling and administrative expenses. And it's just all the rest of our expenses. We could separate and say, oh, here's our selling, here's our admin. We could even say, here's our R&D. But I'm just going to kind of lump them all together. So uh, I've got to deal with in this section, let me highlight it in green, uh, the company president's salary. That hasn't been dealt with yet. The 40% and 20% office expenses here. So 96 grand for depreciation, four grand for uh, property taxes. Sales commissions, that's a selling expense. Uh, utilities expense, though, well, 10% of it, so three grand is an office expense. And advertising is a selling expense. So again, we could separate these and we could say our selling costs are like advertising and sales commissions. Our admin costs are the company president's salary, depreciation, and property taxes and utilities. Um, and you may indeed be asked to do that. I'm just going to list them all as kind of falling under the broader category of selling and admin expenses. So company president salary. Oh, I got to really scroll down here. Uh, and that was 120 grand. Depreciation was 96. Uh, property taxes, four. So again, I'm just looking for the stuff that's highlighted green. Uh, sales commissions, a hundred grand. It's a selling expense. Uh, utilities expense, three grand. And last but not least, advertising expense, 215 grand. So that's all of my expenses. Total selling and admin expenses. Let's add up that list. 120 plus 96 plus 4 plus 100 plus 3 plus 215, $538,000. That leaves me five hundred and twenty two thousand dollars and that is my net income before taxes well actually we should just call that income before taxes also could be called operating income
Now, if we didn't have any income taxes, we would just call that net income. But I, I remember reading as I was kind of scanning the questions, it says prepare an income statement assuming a tax rate of 20%. So our income taxes will be 20% of that 522. 522 times 20% is 104,400. So our company's net income, our company's profit, 522 minus 104. is 417600 That's how much money our company made. Dollar sign at the top of each column and beside the bottom line of our income statement and we've got ourselves a good properly prepared income statement. So at this point we've prepared a schedule of cost of goods manufactured that summarized that relationship of material plus labor plus overhead. Uh, we've prepared our schedule of cost of goods sold and we've prepared our income statement. We couldn't do one without the other. We have to do the schedule of cost of goods manufactured before we can compute cost of goods sold. We have to compute cost of goods sold before we can prepare our income statement. So I hope this video is helpful for you in understanding the schedule of cost of goods manufactured, the schedule of cost of goods sold, and the income statement. Stay tuned for the next video.